Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to do a top ten. <sighs> and the crowd went wild. And the crowd went wild because we're talking about games that you can play with a crowd, a.k.a. party games. Now, the way some people define party games is a little different. We're going to define ours as follows. Yes, there's five points that we want to make. Um, one of them is that it is a game that you can kind of drop in and out of. Like you don't necessarily have to be there for the whole duration. It is an easy to teach and easy to learn game, the combination of that. Um, high player count helps, but you don't necessarily need it, but it's one of the things we are looking at. Um, and you typically don't care about the score because it has a bigger social component to it. Yeah, lots of high interaction. There you go. So these games are, are usually high energy, high fun, uh, low strategy, um, but usually great for groups. Yes. And also, I got my Valentine's Day mugs out. Happy Valentine's Day. Like yeah. way early or late, depending on when you're watching this. Yeah. yeah it's just, I like switching them out. That's all. We have like way too many mugs and they're all themed yeah. appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. We have a one in one out policy with my mugs, but then I switch them by putting them in the decoration so I was able to keep more. But anyway, I died. Breaking the rules. I am. I totally <laughs> am breaking the rules. Um, you know, some of our lists might also be breaking the rules that we just created. Yeah, for we ourselves. just told you five things about party <laughs> games. Half of these are probably going to break that. Yeah. Whatever. It doesn't matter. What games do you think are party games? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Anything that's your favorite? Uh, is our list fun? Is our list bad? Is our list good? Uh, you know, what's your list? Put it all in the comments below. All right, you guys. I'm going to start off with my number 10, which is you don't get to know because it's higher on Ryan's list. Ooh, you're going to have to wait. A long time. All right, so my number 10 is Wits and Wagers. So this is a trivia game, right? But you don't really have to be good at trivia. So many trivia games, the smartest person in the room is going to win, and usually it's not all that much fun for everyone else. Yeah. But in this case... Uh, you were really about approximation. <laughs> how good are you at estimating? How good are you at guessing how close you are? And this, you're going to you know, make a guess based off of a question. Uh, and then on all top numerical. Of, all numerical answers. Yep. And then on top of that, when everybody submits their answers, it's not necessarily, there's, there's a betting component. It's wits and wagers. So you bet on an answer. It doesn't necessarily have to even be the one that you submitted. Yeah. If you're out there, you look at the board, and you're like, boy, mine's way out of line. <laughs> Maybe I don't know as much as I thought. You can bet on someone else's. And you get uh, chips based off of that. So at the end of the game, you know, you're, it's all about the, who was able to bet on the best answer the most amount of times. So this is also maybe one of the first, like, ten games in our collection. Ryan's uncles up in Michigan taught it to us when we were visiting them. And we were like, we should probably own this. And so we did. And we have not regretted it because we play it. It's, it's so accessible. We play it all the time. Yep. Yep. All right, let's move on. My number nine is also Ryan's number nine, and that is Starlink. So Starlink, this is it's a drawing game, right? You're trying to draw an answer based off of a card, uh, kind of like Pictionary style. But the catch but wait, is, yeah, there's more. Yeah, uh, there's it's a big map of the constellations, right? Of all these different stars all over the board. Um, it's a really, really deep, dark, kind of purpley blue. It looks awesome. Yeah. And you have a white dry erase marker, <laughs> and you have to draw point to point between these different stars. Because you're drawing constellations. You're drawing constellations, so you know maybe you know it's really easy for you to draw a face, but if you use these stars, maybe it's not so easy as you yeah. thought. And so it has this nice twist to it. Uh, and besides that, when it's all done, it looks amazing it on the board. It looks really Every cool. Every single time it looks picturesque. All right. Picturesque. Picturesque. All right, guys. Let's move on to my, my number eight, which is the electronic catchphrase. Yeah, uh, when I was a kid, we had non-electronic catchphrase. I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, why, did, why would it be called electronic catchphrase? Well, I, I figured that out, but I didn't realize it. There was like, like this device that like had like oh, had a lid and all these different like little cards that were like circles and you'd put them on there and then you'd close it up and then you'd ka -chunk, and it would spin to the next ka -chunk. one. ka -chunk, and you'd pass it and ka -chunk. So yeah, when we got married and you had electronic catchphrase, I was like, oh, she's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game that I brought to our relationship was yeah. electronic catchphrase. You're welcome. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. This is a game that I basically will always bring somewhere, especially if, if I'm going with people that I know are not party uh, gamers whatsoever. 
this is the game that you bring because it's not, you really don't have to be um, a gamer and it's hilarious when people try to pass things off or you try to get people to guess words and then like it's beep 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 and then you pass it off and it beeps and you're like, ah, I gotcha. And that interaction right there is the reason why it's not on my list. I really do enjoy playing. I love that style of play. Um, and there's similar games on my list that we'll get to later. But, yeah, just that whole, like, timer thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I will say I have played with a few people who have um, really high anxiety. Don't play with them. Yeah. It will, it will not help them. So my number eight is Concept. In this game, you've got a big board of all these different, like, basically clues, essentially. And yeah. there's cards that are you're trying to get people to guess what your concept is, what the main idea is, and all that kind of stuff. So maybe it's the title of a movie, maybe it's a quote, maybe it's just some other abstract what was, thing. What was the Men in Black one? You had dudes inside black. <laughs> dudes inside black was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so you're tr trying to get people to guess what your uh, phrase and word is using all these different concepts and, and shapes and uh, whether it's historical or, or, you know, fictionary or fictionary. Fiction. <laughs> I was trying to say imaginary. <laughs> imaginary or fiction. And, uh, it's a phrase or like a holiday. Just, yeah. Really yeah, good. so yeah, this game is, is fantastic, and it fits right in with what we're talking about, is the score flat out doesn't matter. This is a game that you just play for fun, you know? And there's there's the rules about being a team, there's rules about it being cooperative. It doesn't Nobody matter how that. you play it, it's all about just trying to guess what these crazy clues on the board are, or trying to give these crazy clues, and it's just so much fun. All right, guys, my number seven. This makes us super cute because we matched up again. Did we? Aren't we adorable? Oh. Yeah, we're so cute. Okay. My number seven and Ryan's number seven is code names. And we kind of just did it as a pocket of for all code names because there's how many code names are there? Approximately thirteen thousand. There's like a Harry Potter code names, there's the Marvel code names, there's the pictures code names. There's Disney, there's the there's, Disney. The, there's the code names duet for two players. Code, yeah. Exactly. So specifically what I think what I was talking Those about. Those are just the ones I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The ones I'm specifically thinking about were um it's the original code names where you've got two teams trying to battle it out, trying to get words that are on a grid, trying to get people to guess your team to guess your words, and someone else is trying to get their team to guess their words, all without trying to guess each other's words and trying to get the kind of that word association tied together. Yeah. And there's always this rogue assassin where it's going to really screw yes. things up, yes. uh, which is just a whole lot of fun. Um, it's a really kind of a, it's a much thinkier game than you would think. I mean, this is. I guess probably the best example of where board games and like strategy board games and party games meet. Yeah. Because I've played this with you know, board gamers. I've played this with part people who enjoy party games yeah. and family and everybody in between. And this is just, this really fires for everybody. What is it? The like board gamers party game? Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. That's how I would word it. The board gamers party game. It's just really, really thinky, uh, but also really satisfying. So I brought this to a women's retreat a couple of years back and I taught it to everybody and we played. It was fun. We had a jolly good time. Anyway, the next night, they had enjoyed it so much that while I was playing other stuff, they had gotten it back out to play it again. And these were not, um, these were not like what we would call hobby gamers, but that they chose to go back to this game and play it again. And I just think that is definitely like a sign to the game. Yeah. So that was our number seven, code names. Uh, there's also a game called Cross Clues. This is all straight cooperative. It does a lot of the same things, almost like in the inverse though. Yeah. So that was a kind of one I wanted to mention, but yeah, code names is fantastic. All right, guys, my number six is timeline. And just like code names, there's a ton of different timelines. You can actually mix them together and like play all of them. Um, but like basically, inventions, discoveries, yeah. uh, various ones throughout history. All sorts of weird stuff. Um, and so basically what this game is, is you're trying to create a timeline. So there's going to be one thing that starts on the board, you know, an event, a discovery, you know, when somebody was born, doesn't matter. Just something's going to start on the board. And what's going to happen now with the cards in your hand, you are going to place an event and you're going to guess whether it happened before what's on the table or after. So like the Wall Street Journal, right? Wall Street Journal was founded. And then you have to decide if Abraham Lincoln was born before or after the Wall Street Journal was founded. And so the point of the game is you're trying to empty your hand. So if you are wrong, then you have to draw another card. But if you're right, then you're fine. You don't have to draw any more cards. And at the beginning of the game, it's kind of easy, but as the game carries on, it gets really hard to find those like in between places. Yeah, I love this one. It's a good one too. All right, so my number six is actually higher on someone else's list. Well, it's you. <laughs> higher on higher on Bethany's list, so I'll uh, wait for that. All right, guys, we're on to my number five, which is 
word on the street. So this game has word up on the street. <laughs> word up on the street. Mm -hmm. I'll take that out and post. No, you won't. No, I won't. You have to keep that in there. It's too <laughs> embarrassing. You can't get rid of that. Okay, so anyway, we're down the street. It's this, um, it's all these letters on, like, this board. They're all of the consonants except for, what, what are they? The like the ones that are worth 10 points in Scrabble. Such Those as, are like, not there. X, Z, J, that kind of thing. Those are yeah. out of the game. Yeah. So what's happening in this game is you're on teams and something is going to, there's going to be a card and it'll be something like, fruit and what you do is you get like 20 or 30 seconds for your team to come up with a fruit that ideally has the most amount of consonants that you can think of and so you can do like pineapple that's a good one yeah oh, it's fantastic <laughs> <laughs> so what's gonna happen is with these letters with every letter that you do so all of those p's you get to move it over and over so is it two spaces it, yeah, there's two strikes on each side plus yep. one in the middle, and you're trying to knock it off the middle. Yeah, so that's what you're trying entirely. to do. You're trying to get it off the board, but what happens if you don't get it all the way off the board and then the next person's turn and they use the same letter, it goes back, and so it gets closer to their side of the board. So you're just going back, trying to think of these words based off the clues to get these pieces off of it. This is one that's really good to play virtually because all you really need is somebody to have a screen of that board and then they can just dictate what's happening and move the stuff back and forth. Yeah. All right, so that was your number five. My number five is Telestrations. Uh, this is kind of one of those drawing games, kind of like we talked about Starlink or Pictionary, one of those, but it's a little bit more than that. There's the game of telephone, right? You yeah. play when you were a kid. You whisper something in somebody's ear, and then they whisper the, what they heard, thought they heard into someone else's ear, and it goes all the way through the classroom. And then when it comes back, it's like you compare what the first thing was to what it's now become as it's gone through a whole bunch of kids' ears. Could you imagine like kids whispering to each other now? Teachers would freak out. They'd be like, six feet, six feet, no whispering. <laughs> <laughs> like, this loud whispers, like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The cow jumped over the moon. Yes. Like, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously the worst a worst game in television <laughs> ever. Corona edition. Yeah, yeah. Right, but this is kind of like that, right? So you have, uh, you have a word, and you're given, and you draw that thing, but then. Uh, someone else gets that book from you and they have to figure out what it was that you drew. Yeah. And then they write down what it was they thought that you drew. Yeah. And then someone takes that word or phrase and they draw a picture of that. And it keeps on going and going till the end. So it's kind of like this kind of ever shifting thing. Hopefully yeah. not. I mean, maybe you're really, really good at guessing and drawing and it's the same thing. But really what happens most of the time is it's, it's completely changed, yeah. right? So what you started with was, you know, Chewbacca, and you ended with, you know... A Christmas tree or something. Yeah, right. it's just like, <laughs> right. like, what? What and, happened I, here? I, that's the best re the moment, is that reveal of the end when you're like, everyone's flipping through their books and like, how did you get from Chewbacca yes. to Christmas tree? What, what went wrong here? And then you flip through the book, and it's... I love that reveal part of this game. It's so much fun. Yeah. All right, guys. My number four um, is actually higher on Ryan's list. So Ooh. we'll just have to wait just a little bit. So, so my number four is Monikers. Uh, this is a game that I've played under... It was called different things at different times, I think, and maybe under different publishers. I think I even played it back in like high school or college when it wasn't even a published game. It was just people were just doing it. Um, but... Uh, what happens is there's a whole stack of phrases, words, that kind of thing, and you are going through them and you're trying to get these clues out as fast as you can. So it might be like famous people or it might be uh, an event or a name, that kind of thing. It's all kinds of different nouns, right? So as you're going through, it's kind of like catchphrase where you can kind of describe it however you need to s describe it. So let's say the thing is, is Tom Hanks. You're able to say, hey, he's the main actor who starred in Forrest Gump and he was in you know, St. Private Ryan or whatever. You're able to say all this stuff. Was he in St. Private Ryan? He absolutely yes. was. Yeah. All right, and then so then the next round, you're going through the same exact stack of cards, but now you only get one word to describe it. Um, so what happens is you kind of build these inside jokes within the confines of this game. So then when you get that one word, you get that card, Tom Hanks, you're like, uh, Gump! And everyone's like, oh yeah, uh, Tom Hanks! And then the third round, uh, no words spoken. This is charade style. So it's the same, again, same stack of cards, but now you're doing charades. You have to act out Tom Hanks somehow. Um, so it just gets wild and wild. The inside jokes that kind of grow from the game, it's just, it's just really fun. Yes, I don't know if I've ever played this. I don't know. We, don't could, like, we can make it up. We, we can, can make it down. super easy, but at the same time... Um, 
the, uh, there's different editions of it, and they are all relevant within the time period. So like the yeah. one that's out now is has stuff like I watched a, a, someone play with like Karen was in there, like oh. and it's like super relevant like yeah. meme type stuff. So yeah, it, I definitely yeah, it's funny. Yeah. My number three is Blank Slate, and this was actually lower on Ryan's list. It was his six. number six. Yeah. yeah, Blank Slate is a game where you have a a compound word and half of it is blank. So you might have like blank house, right? And so everyone gets a chance on their little whiteboards to fill out what that blank is. You might write down on your board full house or um, jail house or brick house or whatever it is you want to fill that blank with. What you're trying to do is you're trying to match up with people around the table. If you match up with exactly one person, you both are going to get three points, which is great. If you match up with more than one person, everybody involved in that matchup is going to get one point each. If you match up with zero people, if you just put like purple house, there's like some weird <laughs> good, good, good house, house. <laughs> some weird thing, you're gonna get zero points. Yeah. So you're trying to match up with at least one person, maybe ideally one person. Yeah. So this is just absolutely hilarious. We almost always bring it to like to, to family gatherings, and it's just so fun to play with siblings. My nieces will put the most obscure things down, and they like all always... three of the nieces have like they match up because yes, yes. They and have so the it's same... just funny to see like the different generations and how that works out, and how people are going to pick up on things that other people don't pick up. And sometimes you know there's a little bit of cheating where you're just like you better put remember this that down. one time. Remember, remember? that you better sitcom get this. that we watched when we were yes. kids, Full House. Oh, no, it's no, it's not that bad. <laughs> no, but, but it's just like if anybody's going to get this, it's going to be Ryan. You and Matt do that all the time. It's usually after we've both written something down, though. It's true. We're like. It's true. We did, didn't we? Yeah, we totally matched yeah, up before, yeah. <laughs> before the reveal. Like, it's really hilarious to see what um, what people put down and how they match up, and then some of the like the really weird things if you play with younger kids. They're like, why? Did, why didn't anybody else put down Purple House? I don't understand. Why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So playing with younger kids is like really they will not win, but it is really funny. <gasps> That's not true. We played this. Remember Thanksgiving, and then like all of your nieces and nephews were like doing the same thing. It's the same thing. It's like a generational yeah. thing. They, they all, all have just, a similar they, experience. Get each other, yeah. And there's uh, another game called uh, Just One, which is does something kind of very similar, but in a cooperative way yeah. instead of in a, a competitive way. Uh, both of them work really, really well virtually. We played this with um, Melissa from Area 50, or Area 51, <laughs> from <laughs> Room 51. We played this with uh, Jordan from Jordan Plays Blue and Ellen and Randy from We Game Together, and uh, we did it all virtually. We played these both of these games actually. Yeah. And only one person has to have a copy of the game, and then you kind of like show the the card and you know blank house, and then everyone writes down a piece of paper, yeah. and then they all show the camera at the same time, and worked out really really well. Is that the same day I had the Culver's incident, the Diet Coffee, and it was like an hour not Diet Coffee, decaf coffee. Diet Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> this coffee like, better have zero calories or else. It was like an hour late. Was that that same time? It might have been. Oh my god. Uh, that was a long time ago. That was a long. That was in the summer. Whew. It's a long year. It's been, it's, yep. All right, guys, let's so carry that's, on. Uh, you're number three, not my number six. Right. My number three is Spyfall. What? Yeah. Oh, we're there. You're right. My Ryan's, number three Ryan's is, doing it right. My number three is Spyfall. This is a hilarious game where there's a, a spy in our midst. Right? We're trying to figure out who it is. There's a whole bunch of these stacks of cards. That you shuffle up all these different baggies. Um, and all these bags have just, like, one location in them. But in them, there's also a traitor, a spy. So everyone gets to know where the location is. Let's say it's a submarine. We're all in a submarine, but one person doesn't know that. They're the spy. And so what you're doing is you're asking questions of one another, trying to figure out who knows what, who doesn't know where we are, and also we call them out. So if we're in a submarine and I say something like, Hey, uh, Bethany, want to go out, step outside and uh, uh, you know enjoy the fresh air? And, and Bethany's like, Okay, sounds good. Let's, let's go. Yeah. And she has to answer the question. Everyone at the table is like, Okay, well, she's obviously the spy. But also the reverse of that. If like you if say you, too many things... Yeah, then you would give it away. If you're yeah. like, okay, uh, how how uh, how does it feel in the room where we're at? And someone's like, oh, it's so confined, and out the window I see fish, you know. Yeah, you said, exactly. You're too obvious or whatever. Yeah. Uh, then the spy is able to be like... Got it. I know where we are. Submarine. And then they win. So it's it's really fun give and take, trying to ask these questions that aren't too obvious and answer in not obvious enough ways to where you kind of give it all away. So I like that one. 
All right, you guys, my number two is Dixit. Um, this is probably one of the first, this was one of the first games I played at a convention. Yeah. Gen like, Con, like, 2015 or something. Who knows? Yeah. I, that's just, it's weird to, like, remember these things in the past. <laughs> this is the first game I played at a convention. And I was really drawn to it. So in this game, you're trying to give a clue of to what the picture is on your card. All these are, all the pictures have really excellent, like, abstract, um, kind of, like, whimsical creepy whimsical artwork on it right so you're trying to give a clue then everybody puts a card down and you flip it over and then everybody is going to guess on which card they think is yours so you want people to guess on your card but you don't want everybody to guess on your card um because that's going to make it so you don't get any points or i can't remember if it's everybody or the majority but it's one yeah. of those things um so it's just really fun i am horrible at this game at both the guessing and also on the clue giving. I don't I don't know what it is. It's like Obscurio. My brain just goes in different places and people don't line up with me. Except for you, Havala. You line up with me. And it's just like, but I really like seeing the clues that people give and trying to get them to guess it and trying to get other people to follow you there. And it's just, yeah. I wonder if there's prints. Do you think there's prints of Oh, I would them? imagine. Yeah. All right. So my number two is your number four. This is Wavelength. This game is gives you a, a range of things, right? So you have this kind of this half circle uh, with, a, with a different um, spectrum. So you might say from short to tall. And then within that, you have a, a randomizer that gives you a bandwidth within that, that large scale. Yeah. So if you know from if you have short from tall, and let's say your bandwidth was right there, my clue, I could say like whatever I want. I could say Bethany. And then everyone else that you know on your team is trying to figure out. Okay, well they can move a little dial. They might say, "Well, we know Bethany is like tall, but not like not super tall, but like not short." And they're trying to guess yeah. where she's at on that bandwidth yeah. compared to what I'm thinking. And then based off, and then you reveal how close they were, and then you get points based on how close you were to that bandwidth. Uh, now some of them are really obvious, like you know short to tall, really, yeah. really opposite ends of the spectrum. But then there's also a whole set of advanced cards that are. Really, really, yes. really fun that makes yeah. this game shine, I think. Which were like one of the ones I remember was like from art to commerce. Yeah. And then yeah. like there was a bandwidth, and one of the people that we were playing with uh, said uh, an award winning film. Mm. Yeah, an award winning movie. And it's yeah. like, okay, between art and commerce, where did that <laughs> lie? And it's yeah. like, that was such a great clue. It was like it, we had this fantastic discussion Thank you. about it. That was my clue, I remember. Was, was it you? Great. Yeah, it was me. I was, in my mind, I was like, someone else set up. Yeah, because Blake was the only one that was with me. He had it right on the dot, and you and Adam convinced him to not do it. I remember this. Well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but yeah, that game, that, that, I love those the discussion that comes from this. So much fun. Yeah, that is, it's a lot of fun. I really like that. All right, guys, we've made it. We've arrived. We've arrived to the very end. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Yep, we made it. And now it's over. No, we got to tell them. Oh, we tell them too? Yeah. No, no, tell them number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the number one, our number one picks for best party game yes. of all time. And Bethany didn't even choose a party game. I did choose you a party game. You most definitely game. did this not. This totally is a party game. Okay, so my number one is Pitch Car. And this is totally a party game. I love it, but it's not a party game. nobody cares who wins. So this is a dexterity game where you have um, like a map that you're trying to get around and you're flicking this little piece to try to go around the first person, like do it three times or something wins, but there's ramps that you can put up so you can have your little disc like fly up and do weird things and you have to turn the curves and some of the curves don't have edges to them. So you fly right off the board. This game is hilarious and it's a game that you don't even care really who wins. You just want to see those weird things happen while you're doing it. We, um, when we play this while, like, with the really little kids, we cheat and let them flick it twice um, just to make it more enjoyable for everybody involved. But this game is just hilarious. It's a game where you don't care if anybody wins. If you have to leave, it's fine. You can join again at the end and just, like, mess with people. It is great. Pitch car. Also, side note, a little bit of, like, Ryan and mine's history. We actually picked this up at a garage sale. Six like, years ago or I was something. Like, what? That's amazing. Yeah, they did not know what they had. We also got like a ton of really nice hobby games, all sorts of stuff. I don't, I don't think they really understood what was in their garage sale. Or they just didn't have a use for it. Or we, I mean, we made out. I mean, <laughs> they could have made 
so much money if they had taken the time and we were just like let's take this we filled the trunk do you remember that i remember that yeah it was, it was good awesome. day it was a great day all right so my number one this is bethany's number 10 this is hughes and Q's. this is is this huge massive board it's extremely covered it's got like the entire spectrum of colors yeah. out on this board in this huge grid and what you're doing is as a clue giver you give a one word clue based off a card you're given so you might say something like pistachio or something like that and then everyone puts their little markers on where they think the color pistachio is and then as, as it comes back around to you you can give a two word clue and you could say you can try to kind of hone in a little bit more right try to lime get, sherbet lime sherbet or whatever yeah. it is trying to get people to get a little bit closer to where you're you are. So everybody does it again, kind of get, puts more things out there. And then at the end of that, you get points based off of how close people were to your clue. And then on top of that, everybody else also gets points based off how close they were to your original spot. Uh, so this it's extremely accessible, right? Yeah. All I have to know is just colors. We played this with our daughter. Uh, well, we actually even play tested before it was published yeah. officially when she was, what, five? Probably. And yeah. now that she's seven, she made her list of games. She put it in her top ten of all time, like yeah. of all yeah. games, not just party games. Um, this is uh, we can play it with, with well, kids. Yeah, you can play it with grandparents. The you can spectrum play it of it. Yeah, and with all of them in the same game, so you can have the grandkids and the grandparents all playing together at the same game. And I don't honestly, I don't think there's a lot of games that can help that they can they can say that they can do that right we play this you know it was all you know strategy style board gamers obviously it's not a strategy game it's a party game yeah but it's still engaging all the way through and on top of that it's in a game one of those ones that we talked about where you can play it with you know remotely all you need is another camera yeah. uh over the top showing the board and then you can kind of flash the cards to people and as long as everyone's not looking at the right times you can totally play this uh over the internet which is which is a lot of fun yeah this is also another game i am horrible at i don't know why i'm bad at <laughs> I don't guessing i've ever won either <laughs> yeah i'm bad at guessing and i'm bad at giving clues like when i put my square on it and everybody was like over here and i'm like yoink <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> well, if you give a clue like grape it's like well is it like a, one of the red grapes or the green grape or white yeah. grape or whatever so yeah. you have to kind of like give a more signature clue than that but guys, we want to hear from you. What games on our list do you really like? What games have you not played yet? What games do you think would go on our list and we missed out on it and we should put on it? Put all the comments below. Like how concept isn't a game. It's just an idea. But it's still really fun. Yeah, but it's not a game. But it's still really fun. So anyway, comment <laughs> ahead. We want to know what your favorite party game is and if we were wrong or where I was right. We crossed over like half of this list. What are you talking about? I know. I know. <laughs> we have a really similar party game taste, we do. apparently. We do. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. You can find us on all the places. On Facebook, we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we are Ryan and Bethany One. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. Everybody, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.